Hey guys, my name is Christian Saab. I'm the owner of CPG Recruitment, and this is Brooke Chittle, one of my amazing, amazing account managers here. And I wanted to put us together because um, I know the labor market's kind of screwed up, especially for young people. And Brooke, she is 21 years old, and I wanted to understand what the heck is going on with anybody from like the age of 19 to 23. How do they feel? in the market how are they getting jobs how's their life look like like what is going through the daily mind of a early 20 year old okay and a late teenager so that's really anyone coming out of high school till about 23 so why don't we get right into it so tell me just naturally like mm -hmm. what the heck is what is what are people thinking at right after they leave high school right now like where's everyone's mind at where's their aspirations their thoughts their how to start their life like what's what's the thought process what's the vibe well i can only speak from having not gone to post-secondary school mm -hmm. um so a lot of people are they have a idea that young people don't want to work don't um, have any motivation or don't have any loyalty to companies. I hear that all yeah. the time. Yeah. Every time it's like these young kids don't want to work. Yeah. There's young people don't understand the concept of getting your hands dirty, all that stuff. Like I know what I'm hearing mm -hmm. from employers. You can't seem to find anybody that wants to work or their mindset's totally different or, yeah. you know, all they want to be is YouTube or Instagram stars and all this stuff. That's exactly. the perception of somebody yeah. who's, who's like 30 years old and higher. Exactly. So, but what is actually happening? Like what is, when you're out with your friends? Yeah. Okay, I wanna know personally. Well, okay. You're out with your friends, what do people talk about? Are people talking about, like when I graduated high school and going mm -hmm. into university, I was ambitious, aspiring to like, I wanna get my degree, mm -hmm. I wanna work for a big company, I wanna be an engineer, that was me at the time. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of, I wanna, want, there was, I was surrounded by a lot of people that were like that, that they were hungry, there was, they wanted to start something. What's the vibe now? Um, well, a lot of the people that I know are working two to three jobs to make ends meet. Or really? To, yeah, to get either their car payments. Um, nobody is really looking into getting a house or even renting an apartment right now because you can't. Um, a lot of us have this idea in our head that we won't even be able to do that until our late 20s, early 30s, maybe. Because um, mm -hmm. even if you go and you get a good job, it's still not enough anymore to get approved for a mortgage or put that money into an apartment that you're not actually getting anything out of. But the only route you can really go is at the apartment route. So a lot of people are worried about what their future looks like, if they can even have a family. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my friends, everybody's pretty much written off if they're going to have kids or not because- Already. Already, because we first we grew up hearing about because we grew up during the 2008 mm -hmm. market um how expensive we were and we know how stressed our parents were and it's even worse now than it was in 2008 and we are kind of pretty much aware of the fact that if you're even going to have one kid it might fully break break your bank and yeah so okay let me decipher that a little bit so you you have all your friends mm -hmm. how many of your friends are working two three jobs um, you're at a ballpark. Uh, a ballpark, it five or six of them are, and then so most of your friends. Most of my, yeah, most. You don't of have my a thousand friends. friends. No. You've got it's pretty much most, almost every one of your friends. Every one of my friends is working. So on the weekend, jobs. you guys message each other saying who's not working, when are we hanging out? Yes, exactly. And Where it's just contradicting to people my age or higher, like these kids don't want to work. Meanwhile, yeah. they got three jobs. Yes. So what kind exactly. of jobs do they have? Uh, most of us either have a full-time job and then a part-time job. I personally have two full-time jobs and a part-time job as well. Um, uh, my like friends, what are they? I am a magazine publisher. I am an account exec executive here and I'm a server at a restaurant on the weekends. And what about your friends? What do they and do? My friends, they are also, a lot of them are servers. Um, a lot of them are in um, the beauty industry or are getting into marketing and business. Um, I have a lot of them that are in the trades as well. A lot of my guy friends that are in the trades, they're still mm -hmm. doing side jobs, um, trying to make so ends let, meet. Perfect, let me clarify that. Yeah. Of all your friends that you're referencing, mm -hmm. it's a mix of guys and girls. Yeah, it's a mix of guys and okay. girls, yeah. And um, so everybody has actually got a full-time schedule of work. Yeah, or- Anyone gone to university? 
Yes, most okay. of my friends have gone to university. A lot of them have either finished their degrees or are in their last year of finishing their degree. Okay. Um, my friend that is finishing her degree, it's, she does her schooling, she does her um, job through the city, and then yeah. she also helps uh, do marketing on the side for other companies as okay. well. She, what kind of a degree is she going for? Business. A business degree. And who, who's graduated so far with what degrees? I'd love to hear that story uh, of what they're doing Restaurant management. Now. A lot of them went to school for the trades. I have electricians, okay. um, plumbers. Uh, and did they finish it? Yeah, they all finished. And are they working? Uh, yeah. Multiple jobs or uh, a they lot found? Of them, uh, a few of them are working their full-time jobs, but some of them are still having to do stuff on the side. Because their yeah. job doesn't pay them enough? Yeah. Nothing. Exactly. Or I have some that are in uh, like higher, they've been in the industry for years, are in, in higher positions within their company and they're still not making enough money and they're starting up businesses on the side to try and make their ends meet. So, so how do you feel when someone says a 20 year old doesn't want to work? It honestly frustrates me a lot. Um, I, all my jobs pretty much are me dealing with business owners. so. I hear that very often um, and it it's very frustrating because I know how much we want to succeed and we want we see our parents oh at 21 they had their first house they were starting their family by 23 they were they were living an mm -hmm. adult life it kind of feels like we are just older teenagers because we still have hmm. the same limits we are all still living at home because you can't get a house um, it doesn't feel like we have been able to grow in the way that our parents and generations before them were able to. So it's funny that you actually mentioned that. I bought my very first house when I was 23. Yeah, and that's what I and, and I'm 32, so yeah. this was nine years ago. This isn't long ago. This isn't long ago and it's in, in just nine years. Mm -hmm. Oh, this could yeah. get good. There's a big This difference. could get good. I think everybody knows now exactly which in just yeah. a nine year term, I'll hint a nine year political term, how yeah. much something has changed. And I'm not afraid to say that because yeah. nine years ago, I was 23. You're almost 23. Okay. I was able to buy a house, beautiful yeah. house, 4,000 square foot home actually, yeah. as a matter of fact, it was a gorgeous house mm -hmm. and um, you can't even, that's no. not even a thought no. anymore out and the door. A few people that I know um, were put, their grandparents put them into positions that when they passed, oh, here's something so that you can get a house. That is mm -hmm. um, Interesting. not even enough for a down payment. So I'm actually pissed right now. Yeah. I genuinely, now I'm fired up. So what if I told you that um, I might I might have to bring you in. We got some people in the background. What if I told you that there's places in the world that a three bedroom home with one and a half bath, basement, full nice family yeah. home, you could buy it for $280,000. Yeah. That's why I can't see myself fully staying here for that okay. long I would love to so move abroad to our, our guest somewhere. behind you has that in a beautiful home mm -hmm. new in Baltimore for two hundred eighty thousand dollars by house I bought nine years ago I bought my first house for three hundred mm -hmm. four bedroom house and for three hundred no, that's gone yeah you doesn't can't. exist you have no chance yeah we have no chance and you can't and people I hear all the time um, some business owners they comment on um, not even business owners, even like parents, my grandparents, they'll comment on, oh, well, when we go to work, oh, we really only care about the money. Um, I would say, yeah, obviously we only care about the money because yeah, you can't survive. We can't, we can't survive. You can't, we can't eat, you can't drink, you can't pay gas. No, you can't get a new car. Even mm -hmm. getting a new car is like, oh, do I, do I take from the, the money I have saved for a house because I need mm -hmm. a car? I just had to make that decision. Mm -hmm. I just had to take money out for my my home fund to buy a new car and it was more than when I was bought my first car six years ago mm -hmm. more than I would have to even spend then it's, it's yeah hard. it's hard so everyone does work hard yes I believe. now is there if you try to look at the other, is are there people in your age group like a good amount where it stands yeah. out that they're not working like I is do, there someone yeah. is there a point being made of there's something wrong there, like I know you're yeah. an exception you're exceptional, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you're actually an exception. Like, are yeah. you actually, you're one of the 20, early 20s yeah. age, is most of the people working hard or? Like, I do what? believe that people aren't lying when they say some people 
don't work but as that's hard. Everywhere. But There's, that's everywhere. I meet 40-year-olds that do, their brain they, yeah. they, they makes no sense. They don't know the concept of work. I meet 50-year-olds that don't know the concept of work. I meet people my age. We have that, I think, in every group. Yeah. But it's so like, you guys are getting labeled that, the whole group. Yeah, I think um, a lot of it, like a lot of people do, of every age, there's phone addictions. Everybody's addicted mm -hmm. to their phone nowadays. I do think that people, I think that young people have even more of an addiction, but I do also think that there's a lot of good things that come from social media mm -hmm. and being able to build your brand from social media, but there's a lot of people that don't know the boundaries of when to set mm -hmm. the phone down. And I also think there is a lot more access to things that there wasn't even access to five or six years mm -hmm. ago and people can get caught up in that. Um, but I don't think that there is as drastic of a difference. I do just think that I know my generation, we don't have as much loyalty to companies and they can maybe see that as being okay, lazy. Tell me more um, about that. Well, as me and um, Holly were just discussing, we don't feel the need if we're not getting treated properly or getting paid enough. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have a problem leaving the company and mm -hmm. finding somewhere else that will treat us better. Um, that can be, I know for my grandparents' generation, it's a bit of a shock um, to even for part-time jobs to be leaving part-time jobs and be kind of jumping mm -hmm. around to part-time jobs. but. A lot of people get taken advantage of, they're not being paid enough, and they want to move somewhere that they're more valued, mm -hmm. and I think that that gets a bad rap. Mm. But I know a lot of my grandparents like, and their friends and my aunt, great aunts and uncles, they talk about how they hated their job their entire life. They never did something that they were enjoying. I think my generation cares, since we're not having the same quality of life and like, oh, we can get a house. we can go and travel and do all this cool stuff that our parents were able to do, um, we might as well be working at, at a job that we enjoy and Yeah, if you can't buy a house and can't buy a car, at least enjoy yeah, your day. Exactly. We're taking that right where before you could kind of hate your job, but say, you know what, I got a beautiful house out of it and I got a car and it pays exactly. the bills. That's, it's you know what, my, my dad lived his life, you know, he, he's, whether he loved his job or not, he did it. Mm -hmm. And he worked really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it was always like this job got us this yeah. house, this home, and, and this it. life that we have. You and not. it's a great life that yeah. we have. So we don't get that when when you can't get the life that you want. So what, what other resort do you have but to at least try to enjoy your day? Exactly where you spend most of your time at. If you're having to still live at home at the age of 26, mm -hmm. 27, because it's not even up to the age of 23. A lot like I have a lot of older friends that are close to 30 and are still in the same position that we are mm -hmm. um, and it's not because of lack of working hard I have I know somebody that has five jobs currently and three of them are practically full-time that she does really and she she works more hours in a week than I bet a big business owner would be working and she mm -hmm. She's just still able to make her ends Does she live on her own or does she um, live with she her family? With her, she lives with her uh, boyfriend. Those are the boyfriends. So mm -hmm. two people working really hard to try yeah. to keep up with rent. Yeah. Try to keep up with the cost groceries. of groceries. Yeah, exactly. Their taxes. Can I share a grocery joke from yesterday? We were, I asked, I was, um, I have this guest from Baltimore here and I'm like, I'm like, tell me a little bit about Baltimore. And like how much you know does gas cost yeah how much by the way gas is is um you said what was it 360 a gallon that's less than a dollar a liter mm -hmm. for gas and then i asked groceries how much does it cost you to do groceries she's like oh about 350 dollars <laughs> and i'm like i'm like yeah it's about that's kind of high it's about the same over here and she's like no a month and i was like a month 350 a month for yeah. groceries she's like at max i'm like that's like 350 a visit yeah. for me yeah. Every time we go here. Yeah. So it's just basic necessities, your milk, your eggs, your, your, like I'm moving to Baltimore. <laughs> okay. You can buy a house for 280 grand. You can do groceries for $350 a month. Yeah. Your mortgage at 280 grand, you're just under a thousand bucks. If you just put 20% down or 10% down or whatever. So you're going to be, call it all in. Your cost of living is going to be maximum two grand. By the yeah. time you fill up gas, by the time you go out for a nice dinner, you're max two grand in a month. For cost of sound about right max mm -hmm. two grand so you even at a, a minimum wage job of 15 dollars an hour you're making and it was that 15 times 40 per hour is what's what is that in a week minimum wage about 500 bucks roughly 
roughly about 500 bucks a week for four weeks, there's your two grand. So that's the bare minimum wage could have the basic necessities of life, a home, a car, groceries, food, and you could live comfortably yeah. in Baltimore. Yeah. And but here, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Hmm. And, and it's all over, can't like. And everyone is actually working hard. There's, there's. We know that people don't work hard in all age groups. Yeah. You got people from the age of twenty to thirty that have multiple jobs, mm -hmm. and still they won't get them anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'll tell you from a recruitment perspective, when we see people having multiple jobs, we sometimes criticize it. Yeah. Oh, why do you keep jumping from place to place to place? Why is it inconsistent? Well, I could probably relate to that now because if I'm only getting paid 16 bucks an hour and my boss treats me like shit, mm -hmm. I'm going to move and then I'm going to get criticized for it later because I left because my piece of paper says that I worked here for three months. Exactly. And hmm. you mentioned resumes. Um, I also think that uh, business owners write off the younger generation for lack of experience. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, you Google it's free. You, sometimes you don't need... You don't need actual job experience. Some of these people have been working at their family mm. shops growing up or just learning as they go and they are very intelligent. They might not, it might need more experience in the trades, but in the business world, in the financial world, sometimes you just need to give young people a chance and it will surprise you. Um, like I said, I didn't go to school and I published a magazine in under six months and I had it in print and I never spoke to a business owner before before mm. that face-to-face -face. and then I walked in and was able to do it fine because um, they took a chance on me to do it. Yeah. And I think that if people gave young people more of a chance, it would it would help. And yeah. it helps put us in more, a little bit higher paying positions and hopefully it would be worth it in the end mm -hmm. for both parties. I think I'll, I'll even add to that a little bit, not just give them a chance, but put them under pressure. Give them mm -hmm. something that is above them. Like I, when I graduated university, I was 22 years old. Yeah. I get a job at the Windsor assembly plant as an engineer. And the pressure I got from day one, it was like, you're, so to give you a perspective, if the line stops every 42 seconds, mm -hmm. a car is being produced. So if there's a defect on a car, it's going to be on a bunch of them. So every 42 seconds, that defect is on that next car. Mm -hmm. It takes you an hour to fix the problem. You got 60 cars in the yard with that defect on it. Yeah. If it takes you two days to fix the problem. You've got a whole yard of cars, right? That costs thousands, hundreds of thousands, not millions of dollars sometimes. And I'm 22 years old and they're like, you got to fix it right now. Mm -hmm. And you're standing in front of senior vice presidents and, and you're, I'm explaining to them, this was the defect. This is where it came from. This is how we stopped it. This is how we contained it. This is how we permanently fixed it. This is where the project's at. And all the cars have been repaired and every, and it's not coming off the line, the defect. Yeah. Doing that on the spot as a 22 year old. Exactly. It builds confidence. So it wasn't a chance it was given, but I was put under pressure, which developed me. Mm -hmm. So I, I personally think I'm a very advanced 30 year old because of that experience of being pushed and be put under pressure at such a young age. Yeah. So I, I think I was giving, given the fortunate, not just chance, but the opportunity to be pushed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where for some reason, like people, like people don't like to push people anymore. No. Like I've been missing that. Like, do you ever get pushed by anyone other than me? Like who pushes you? Who pushes your limit? There's got to be a couple yeah. of people, but oh, yeah. like, do your do your do your um, friends? They come home from work. And they're like, man, my boss was on me today, pushing me. Like, is that there? It could be. It could not. I'm not sure. It it depends do on people say it that? depends on the industry that it's in, but I think a lot of uh, they don't. Uh, it's just a job. Clock in, just, clock out. It's a lot of pe for a lot of people. It's just a job. Does any any one of your friends ever call saying, "I'm going to be running late. I got to stay an extra hour at work because I got to help out"? Yes. Like, there's got to be. Yeah. An, I yeah. think that's there. Yeah, My, I'm sure. We uh, like, I we care a lot. Mm -hmm. We really do care a lot because you're you want to succeed and you want to get more of the opportunities. So a lot of the people I know will go above and beyond to get a chance at those yep. other opportunities. But I also, like adding on to what you said before, um, in comparison to older generations and them already, you know, having a home, having their family, like say you're hiring on a 50 year old, but, or 40 year old, but a 25 year old is offering that position. The 50 or 40 year old could be a little bit less hungry 
for mm-hmm. and less ambitious because they're already set. It's just they're set. another they got job. Their car, they got their house, just they another job. It. Let's go. They just need something to pay the bills. But somebody who's younger, we have all these pressures from every part of your life to try and get to that next step that feels like it is miles and miles away. And mm-hmm. so they they will work and they will push and they will take extra hours to try and get yeah. to that position. So I think that if people gave more of a chance on young people, mm-hmm. it would surprise them a little bit in how much they're actually real, willing to do. Hmm. Is there, most people, this, I'm guessing everyone's still living at home. Yes. So the 30, you're 30 years old, still living at your parents' house is going to be a very, is a very common thing now, it's I imagine. It's not going to, it should not be an, used as an insult anymore because it's not it's even life. with lack of trying. It's not their fault. It's the just world. the way. It's the way it is this, now. The situation where yeah. we are is exactly that. Exactly. And that's what they're forced to. So, okay, so we're going to break some barriers here so we know the young do actually want to work hard. Mm-hmm. They're almost set to fail in the beginning. No yeah. one has the time, energy, or money to be able to actually push them and tr- give them a chance. So you, we need, as owners, managers, leaders, we need to factor that in. Mm-hmm. Can't judge a young person's resume by based off of the number of times that they jump from place to place because simply they're just, they ha- they're forced to chase a dollar because a minimum wage doesn't even get you basic necessities. No, it's, I know and, young kid like <clears throat> my brother is a year out of. Uh, a year out of high school and a lot of his friends even trying to get their first cars was like impossible unless mm-hmm. they had a parent willing to sell it to them or yeah. and they had a connection because of everything went up during covid yeah. and their pay didn't really go up and people mm-hmm. crap on oh minimum wage going up but that's not even going to help put it up by a yeah, dollar it's still not going to do gonna any help. favors no the kids are still yeah. they still can't even get their first car and then that puts them back even further because mm-hmm. oh they don't have the driving experience from uh their teenage years or oh they can't drive yeah you're to paying the, the most insurance because you're the youngest yeah, exactly. as well and uh, yeah they're just set what's up, your car set insurance every month well, well I've been month? shopping around for car insurance and apparently I have a great deal. I pay three sixty, but I was getting quoted five sixty, five forty for one car. For one car. Any accidents ever? No accidents, no tickets. tickets nothing. 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 And I pay three sixty. Three hundred and sixty a month. Mm-hmm. So if that's uh, um, what's the average 20, 20 year old right now making twenty bucks an hour? Yeah. Let's call it twenty bucks an hour. So just to pay off the insurance, that's what's three sixty five that's 20 by 20, that's 18, 19, 18, 18, 18 mm-hmm. hours you have to work just to pay for insurance. That's half yeah, the week. Exactly. So half of week one of your month is to pay your car insurance. Yep. Not including gas, which my gas is 120 to fill a mm-hmm. tank. Yep. Um, which a lot of people I know, they're either paying 80 mm-hmm. or 100 plus to fill yeah. the tank. And then you usually have to do that two to three times a month. So, so what, what has to change? Like what's... If it's out of our control, the way everything mm-hmm. costs wise here. So if we're stuck here as a 20 year old mm-hmm. okay, now, actually, you know what, before I say that, I think I do have the solution and I think the solution is to leave because the problem that we see now here in Windsor was already a problem in Toronto Yeah. 10 years ago. I know that because I'm from there and I moved here. And when I moved here, I was like, oh my God, I could buy a house here. Like when I bought my house nine years ago for 300, I remember my manager at the time was like, are you crazy? You bought a house for 300? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, you should have bought a house for like 150. What are you doing buying a full family home for 300? I'm like, dude, I came from Toronto. The cheapest that's out there is five, 600,000. Yeah. I'm like, this is already a deal for me. The mindset was so different, right? So, so what was then 300 was the lavish, oh my God, you just bought like, people mm-hmm. thought that was my parents' house when they'd come over. They're yeah. like, how'd you get this house, right? So, um, I forget the point that was getting, oh, the, the point is I was telling so many people that lived in Toronto, I'm like, guys, leave the city and go to a place where it's inexpensive and you could live. Mm-hmm. Like why? It's, you're not going to be, I remember being six years here after six years of owning my house. Then my friends started buying condos for half a million and getting it co-signed by their parents in yep. Toronto. Condos where I had a house for half the price and it's quadruple the size. Yeah. So maybe the solution is pack up and go, go to Baltimore. Yeah. You can get a house tomorrow for 280 yeah. grand. If like you can get a visa. Right. But there's, yeah. the, I, for me, that was mm-hmm. my solution. Yeah. The, it actually, this isn't, so I imagine, okay. So I imagine this has always been a thing. There's always been 
uh, someplace that's too expensive for the young people. And, and for me, it was easy for me to leave because, you know, I didn't have a big family or anything like that. I could relocate and go. And that's what really, I truly believe that was the one thing in my life that set me up to having this today. This mm -hmm. would have never existed if I didn't come here and be able to buy a house by the time I'm 23 and do whatever. Mm -hmm. But now this chance is now gone for yeah. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe the reality is, is you know what, you could, you're going to work the rest of your life here to hopefully maybe by the time you're 30, mm -hmm. have saved up something and you'll have to get something co-sign. Yeah. And right? sorry, adding on to yeah. the, adding on to that, by the time you get to like 27, 26, 27, and you work so hard and you're already burnt out yeah. from working so hard and you have nothing to show for it. Yeah. It, it's very, I would understand if at those ages people lose their motivation to work as yeah. hard because what are you working for yep you're working for not still living at home it's tough yeah i can imagine it and you know what i honestly truly believe that that's that might be the solution is mm -hmm. you know what you finish school find a market that you could move to where you know what it's it's cheap there's lots of places out there even in canada mm -hmm. even in canada there's still places that the world hasn't really slapped it and said, here you go, you can't connect, can't buy a house, can't do none of that. Yeah. Like we've always known, my whole life, even as a kid, I've known New York City was the highest real estate. Mm -hmm. You can't buy something in New York City ever since I was well, a child. So it's that's always, we've always had that problem in certain places. It's always existed. Now it's in Toronto because Toronto costs Now it's Toronto and now it's here with us, York, yeah. right? So so now it's, well, what's the next place? Maybe that's the solution that every every young person needs to look at you know, look for themselves and say, reality is I could stay here with my family and, and work my life and do this and whatever, and try to have some support, or I could make it super easy and just move to a place, have the same job and have something that I could own. Mm -hmm. exactly. Like it's, it's always been difficult. My parents immigrated here. They wouldn't yeah. have immigrated if their life was just fantastic. Yeah. So maybe that's just the circle of life and we have to acknowledge that. And that might be something every young person needs to consider. If I'm giving advice to a young person, I say, you know what? I did it. My parents did it. Everyone has done it at some point in time in their mm -hmm. life where their area where they were living was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Pack up and go. Okay. And they look out for yourself. But then on the other side of the coin, if they were to stay, then what would be what would be the solution then? If you do stay in an environment that's very inflated, how I'm trying to think of what would I know I, I could give some pieces of advice mm -hmm. for someone who's young to mm -hmm. We already know they work hard. Uh, how, how can we give them some kind of a strategy to say, how do you bring up your net worth, your money that you're now making $30, $40 an hour instead of 20? A lot of people that I know at least are trying to start their own businesses, being their okay. own boss, because they can't justify working that hard to make somebody else mm -hmm. richer and they can't even afford to live. So a lot of them are going their okay. business owner route that you, you took yourself. Yep. Um, but for some people that is unattainable or they're- So young kids. guys are doing that right now too. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that you mentioned that because that reminds me of, I started my first business at 24. Yeah. And it was a car wash, a mobile yeah. car wash. And I made myself 150 grand a year. Yeah. And just washing people's cars. It wasn't complicated. It's easy to make money if you just do it for yourself. Maybe yeah. that's the option. I have some a friend who started his own concrete business, mm -hmm. curbing business at 18. Yep. and blown it out of the water has done very well for himself and because he's seen that he didn't want to make somebody else yep. money he would rather work for himself be his own boss and he got success from it yep. but then you have people who are in like the medical in like fields or went worked hard to like become lawyers all yep. those sorts of industries people still aren't taking as much of a chance on them yep. as they could i think if you gave the young people a little bit more of opportunity um, yeah. they would surprise you with mm -hmm. what they can do. But I really like that of, of start mm -hmm. a business. I yeah. think, well, look at, we. you just brought in a customer who's 17 years old. Yeah, I have a customer who's 17, works with his 15 year old brother yeah. and he were, does very well. Were you there when I was asking him how much, we won't yeah, say the names or anything, no. but I'll say how much he makes, 17 yeah. years old. Yeah. And I was prying away, I'm like, how much money are you making painting painting barns yeah with a, a sprayer you just show, anyone could learn how to paint anyone a building anyone it. just grab a paint gun and paint it it's making 40 grand a month yeah i have painting i have in my magazine i yeah. have some very very young business owners who are yeah. 18 years old and have gotten so much success for themselves that it's shocking that they're they know how to do all this 
at such a young age but that proves we we also have learned a lot like we learned a lot more information in a short amount of time because we have have access to phones yeah. and social media we, a lot of them have been looking at this stuff and know how to run businesses since you were 14 15 years old mm -hmm. not everybody was just playing video games all the yep. time you're constantly educating yourself because you're on different platforms that are just spewing oh something in this industry something in this industry mm -hmm. you don't even mean to come across it but you do and you're absorbing all that information so you are a lot more they're a lot more intelligent than people give young mm -hmm. people credit for okay two solutions then yeah let's end it on two solutions yeah. solution one if you're the type that is intimidated by starting a business, but you want to have a lifestyle and you just want to have a job and live your life. I think the only solution is go find a market that it's like a Baltimore. Yeah. Go do what, what happened to me where I left an expensive market, came to um, a cheap one and I was able to have a sustainable life because there's different personalities and running a business might be a, a, too much for those types of people. So if you really want to have a good life, then just pack up a move. Yeah. We would agree that's probably the easiest. Yeah. Someone can make that decision tomorrow and I get agree. it done, right? If you do not want to move, but you have a little courage and strength and, mm -hmm. and a little smart, pick up a paint roller and go paint a barn or go start a business or learn yeah. how to power wash something. You've got a balloon business. Okay. How much, how much money roughly would you make in a year? And you were just doing this part time in a month. You were doing like $5,000 a month, right? Part time while you're in school. She's going to be making easy 20 grand a month. Yeah. I know it Oh, for by sure. the time she's full-time dedicated in this business. She started yeah. from home blowing up balloons and making decorative items. Yeah, making the arches. Right? Yeah. Beats, beats a $15 an hour job, right? Yeah. My, like even my mom, yeah. if she's working on starting up her own business mm -hmm. now at, at the age that she is. And yep. it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be young people. If you're an older person that yep. can't can't afford to, this market. Go, go make the money. Yeah. And also, I don't think that there needs to be as, like, school is very valuable, but you can spend all this money paying for schooling and you're in an mm -hmm. industry that you find isn't very lucrative. Um, or invest in yourself and yeah, start a business. And start a business. Take that time and mm -hmm. that money and invest it into yourself um, because school, for me at least, school isn't everything. Um, yeah. I am dyslexic I have things that made schools struggle with me and I was still able to be successful without mm -hmm. it because I knew at the end of the day I could still I could still start something myself and yeah we, we I think we should touch a little bit more mm -hmm. on school because yeah it was um, I did university yeah. got an engineering degree but then I would say I learned more from the age of 24 to 30 than I have from 18 to 22 in school. Yeah. There's a time and a place if you got to become an, if you want to become an engineer, lawyer, doctor. Yes, mm -hmm. I get it. You have to go through the process. But even if you did go to school, there's the that we I think that's been very trending now where the education system is missing a lot about the the lessons of life. Yes. Of managing your money, taking care of it, investing in yourself, investing in how do people transact, how do businesses work, how does the economy work? And I know that I felt like I had to relearn and reprogram my mindset after after university. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Changed everything for me. Oh, for sure. So. And yeah. a lot of the people that I know that went to school aren't even using their degrees. Like mm -hmm. my brother went to school to be an architect. He's an FP heavy equipment operator. My best friend is in Boston and she did her art. Well, she's still finishing her architecture degree, but she is well, has more of a focus on interior design now. Mm -hmm. There's my friend that is in restaurant management, isn't managing a restaurant right now. She's doing a few other different things. Their school isn't guaranteed a job. And if it doesn't seem like it's the right fit for you, I wouldn't recommend wasting the money just because somebody tells you that that's what you have to do. And that's the steps that you're supposed to take or going to school. It's fine to take a year or two off, learn a little bit more about life and about how to manage your money and all that before taking the next step and going to school. You don't know yourself when you're 17 years old picking what you want mm -hmm. to do for the rest of your life. A lot of these people can, kids can be putting money down the drain that 
for something that they don't even want to use. The amount of friends that I have that in this past year who did their first three years of school and have switched their degree in the last year because they realized, oh, I don't really want to be doing this. It's just what I was told I have to do. I luckily did not have parents that were that put a strong, for me at least, because of the position I was in, there wasn't a huge pressure on you need to do school, you need to be done within this amount of time, mm. you need to have a degree. Um, they understood that my brain didn't work that way and they had confidence that I would figure it out on my own and I, I did. I, was, mm. I have two full-time jobs. I was able to figure it out on my own and I only have two full-time jobs because I love them both. Mm. Not, I do need them both, but I love both my jobs. So I, I found something that I enjoy without mm. putting money down the drain. Well, it's not down the yeah. drain. There's a lot of value in school, and you do learn a lot. So I'm not fully discrediting it. No, but, but you just you took it and invested it in you. Yeah. It wasn't you didn't do nothing. You didn't yeah. go to school and then and also do nothing. Yeah, you I put worked. it towards you. Yeah, and and, I, and that's it. And and I think um, I think people should be should be reminded that you know what school it's think of what you want to do mm -hmm. rather than what you're told to do. Yeah. Because we know in high school, everyone's telling you, you got to go to school. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just a fact. There's no way around that. The whole world is saying, you got to go to university, you got to go to university. Well, in Canada, at least, I think yeah. the, the government owns the universities. Am I wrong when I say that? Who owns who owns the universities? I would imagine, like, they're government funded. There's a lot. To, it's not in the States. They're privately owned. Yeah. Here, it's different. So it's everything's being pushed, university, university, because yeah. even whether it's privately owned or government owned, it doesn't matter. It's being owned by someone who... Their campaign is hit them in high school, tell them they got to go to school. Exactly. So focus on what you want. And get some real life experience. Yes. Get some real world experience because yeah. it's not what they tell you it is in high mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. It's I. My jobs have to do with <clears throat> speaking in front of people and going into businesses and doing presentations for them and just talking with them. I was a server and I worked in a bunch of different areas um, in town and I was just talking to people and getting to know different people mm -hmm. and I built up my confidence in just having simple conversation and having a good conversation can take you a long way yeah you don't need sometimes it's not all about um, the books sometimes it's about people just want to have connection and you can still get far with just mm -hmm. connection key takeaway what would you advise anyone in their 20s don't listen to all the noise that everybody else is saying, whether that be, mm -hmm. oh, that you don't work hard, oh, you have to go to school, oh, you have to do this, oh, you're still living at home at this age. Just block out all the noise because nobody else is in your shoes, the older generations aren't in your shoes. Um, we're figuring out for our own, we're the first generation that has had this much exposure to this technology and mm -hmm. this kind of world. We need to. We need to function and write it for ourselves, not listen to what everybody else is saying. Yeah, good luck, everybody. <laughs> there we go.